Yes, yes, everybody talks about the Honda Civic. And then they proceed to forget about the Toyota Corolla. And then those who don't have enough money are now talking about the Proton S70. But if you actually put them side by side and you're trying to figure out which is the best C-segment saloon, it's actually the Mazda 3, which has been updated for 2024 with a refreshed lineup, updated specs, and more importantly, this white color that you can't buy in Malaysia. My name is Ayman Ay Abdullah. This is Malaysian Motoring, and this is our review of the 2024 Mazda 3 Saloon. Now for 2024, the Mazda 3's lineup has been updated, so the core models are now gone, and so is the 1.5. Now we get a standard 2-litre across the lineup, which does pretty well, if you ask me. I quite like this engine. It does pretty good, decent power outputs. It's a nice four-cylinder, and it's still paired to that six-speed automatic transmission with power going very obviously to the front wheels, because if it went to the back, this would be a BMW. Now, because of this new spec update, there are also a lot more standard features. So now, you get these LED headlights as standard, which look fantastic. And if you watch our review of the three hatch, you will notice that there are some changes up front. So while the grille remains the same, and the overall shape remains the same, the difference now comes in terms of the surround, because on the three hatch, it's done up in black, but on the three saloon, it's done up in chrome. This is because the saloon is meant to appeal to a slightly more um, elegance-driven buyer, someone who doesn't want their car to be too shouty, but still wants it to look aggressive, which is why you want a front end that just looks this good. Now, down the side, I do appreciate the proportions of the Mazda 3, because regardless of whether or not you get a hatch or a saloon, I think that these lines just flow very smoothly and very elegantly. And of course, because this is a latest generation Mazda, that does mean that down the side, you get very few curves and creases. In fact, none at all if you look down the side profile of the car. Instead, you just get these sort of lovely curves and very gentle tapers, which is why if you get this car in the correct colour, which this is not, you will see a lot of surface play and lovely use of that colour. The way it pops in the sunlight is just... Whew. Now, rolling stock is handled by a set of 18-inch alloy wheels done up in a dark silver wrapped in Bridgestone Terenza T005A tyres. Now, these are the same tyres that we got from the hatch and they are a pretty decent, again, mid-range tyre, something that balances performance and longevity as well as NVH, but we'll touch into that a little bit later. Now, because, again, this is the saloon, you have that lovely tapering roof line, but you also get a chrome surround around the window to make this car look a little bit more elegant. And as far as I'm concerned, I think this is quite successful of the Mazda 3. The only trouble I have is opening the rear doors does reveal that this edge comes out a little bit too far. Now, it doesn't happen to me every time I open the rear door, but sometimes I just sort of miscalculate and it smacks me a little, which is probably just a reminder that I need to lose weight. Now, because this is the higher spec model, you get the signature taillights, which I think look really nice and especially pop at night. But again, because it's a saloon, you have this nice sort of put rear end, you have this nice, very elegant, clean bumper with the number plate down on the bottom, which is usually something that I deride on cars, but because you have the nice badge here in the middle, it's not too bad. Now, there is a button here, which then reveals the boot. Now, this is the main reason why you buy the saloon over the hatch, because if you ask me, I think the hatch looks better, but obviously the saloon has a lot more space. Yes, there is a load lip that is very deep, but you can fold those rear seats 60-40 via these little pull tabs here. They don't flop forwards, but you can push them forwards once they've been released and then you have a lot more space. Although honestly, even for a family of five, you could fit a week's worth of luggage here, perhaps a little bit more. There is a hell of a lot of space in here. And of course, underneath the boot floor, you will find a space saver spare wheel. So that means that this Mazda 3, which is significantly more expensive, is better than the Toyota Vios. But it's the inside of the Mazda 3 where I think it really sells itself because compared to the Honda Civic and the Toyota Corolla, this interior is just of a slightly better quality. Now, we did drive the Corolla recently and I remarked on how there was a lot more soft touch material than you'd expect in a car like that. Now, compared to the Corolla, the Mazda 3 is one step above that. Because in addition to there being soft touch materials, there's also like this lovely stitched leather up here, more stitched leather down here, more stitched leather on the dash top, and all of this is nice and soft and squidgy and it is very well put together. And of course, there are far more controls in this car than you would get 
in a Toyota or a Honda because Mazda knows what ergonomics means. So because of that, this lovely infotainment system up here, which has now been upgraded to a slightly more higher definition screen over last year, is still not a touchscreen. So you still manipulate it through the MZD Connect controller down here, which has lots of useful shortcuts, which if you use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, shortcut to your desired apps rather than try to show something built in, which I appreciate a lot. There's also a favorite button, should you need that. There's also a physical volume knob, again, all very nice. You get dual zone climate control, which you can manipulate via these lovely switches and buttons here, which I, again, appreciate a lot. You also get this lovely thin rim steering with more physical controls for your adaptive cruise control, your audio, and so on and so forth, which I like a lot. There are also paddle shifters here, so you need to manipulate the six-speed automatic gearbox. So everything in here looks good and it feels good too. And of course, when you're sat here, the driving position is absolutely spot on. The driver's seat is electrically adjustable with two-stage memory, but the passenger seat is manual no matter what. Now, this car comes with a sunroof, but I would trade this for a powered passenger seat simply because this is the sort of thing that would make the car feel a little bit more upmarket versus that, which I suspect most Malaysians don't use even though I like sunroofs. Now, again, when you're sat here, everything falls very easily to hand. All of your controls are exactly where you expect them to be. And of course, you can manipulate the digital part of the instrument cluster to show you certain details because Mazda doesn't want to overwhelm drivers with too many options. And of course, if this is not enough for you, there is also a full color heads up display replete with blind spot monitoring and blind spot awareness so that even when you're driving along, you can tell if there is something in your blind spot. Now, unfortunately, no matter how much money you spend on a Mazda 3, you do not get a branded audio system. Instead, you just get a Mazda system in here, which is okay because as far as I'm concerned, the audio in this car is pretty good. What I do not like, however, is the fact that because this is ultimately the same MZD Connect system that we've seen from the Mazda 3 prior, as well as the CX-30, it means that the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is not wireless. And the USB port is down here, which means you have this very awkward position to put your phone, which probably means you won't use the wireless charger that's set up ahead of those cup holders. Ah oh well. Now, practicality in the Mazda 3 is pretty well served with cup holders in the front, relatively large bottle holders in the doors, and that extends to the rear, where again, you still have those bottle holders in the doors, and you have cup holders if you deploy the central armrest. And unlike in other cars, this actually floats nicely, like a high quality item, as opposed to the ones that just flop down. Now, I like this a lot because sat back here, everything in here is very comfortable. With this seat set in my driving position and about 170-ish centimeters, I have a decent amount of knee room and a decent amount of headroom, again, despite that sloping roofline. However, I will note that headroom leeway isn't really that much so if you're an especially tall passenger this might not be that comfortable and of course the seat bases are quite short which means even though the angle is nice and i can tuck my feet in underneath the seat in front of me over longer distances if i cannot stretch out if there's a strong uh, stronger if there's a taller driver ahead of me then i might be a little bit uncomfortable that said however there are these lovely crotch coolers down here or rear air conditioning vents and some of you seem a little bit confused by that and so it is not too bad now if you're trying to fit child seats back here these rear doors do open quite a way although the opening itself is then not very wide which means if you're trying to fit in a child seat i suggest you turn it around to be rear facing one it's already set up in the car because if you do that prior it might be a bit of a palaver to get it through the doors the isofix mounts are very easy to find because they are just mounted there there's no cover or anything of that sort and uh, overall everything back here does seem quite nice and of course because this is a mazda these windows are tinted as standard that's always appreciated but the real appeal of the Mazda 3 is actually in the way it drives because in addition to having this very plush very upmarket interior, you also have this very refined manner of out on the open road. So for starters, these seats, like I mentioned earlier, are very, very comfortable, they're nice and sculpted, they hold you nicely in place, and because all of the buttons and all the switches fall very easily to hand, it means that this is a car that is very easy for you to get used to, especially if you're getting into it for the first time. Now, when you're out on the move, you will realize that yes, this is a naturally aspirated motor, not like the turbocharged mill that you get from the Honda Civic. And so because of that, naturally, you are going to need a few more revs to get going. But as I will demonstrate once this light goes green, revving this engine out is really not an unpleasant experience at all. Because when you're idling or when you're stopped like this, the engine switches off. And then once the light goes green, For a 
pedestrian two liter sky active g engine it's just nice it's got a lovely sort of hummy buzzy note to it which i appreciate hugely and of course there is a decent amount of torque available which means once you do decide to get going it's nice and pleasant the other benefit of course with having an engine like this is the fuel economy so yes i know some of you will say oh but a smaller turbocharged mill will consume less yes in theory if you were to drive like a patron saint then naturally your fuel economy will improve but the reality is a lot of drivers with turbocharged mills tend to have right feet made of lead and when driven that way no turbocharged mill will ever be able to return its claimed fuel economy because once the turbo starts swooling naturally the car will consume more fuel and so on but with a naturally aspirated mill like this the fuel economy remains very very predictable so for example we've had this car for quite a little while now and it's returning about 13 kilometers per liter which i think is very respectable for a car like this particularly given the fact that it's been driven on the motorway in town it's done you know your daily grind commuter sort of thing and despite that 13 liters 13 kilometers per liter is still very good indeed and it's not like we've been driving this car gently at all we have been testing this the way we test every car which means usually the fuel economy is a little bit higher do not ask me how some of my industry colleagues can get better fuel economy than the claimed numbers now to me the Mazda 3's abilities in town are expected all C-segment saloons do pretty well in town, at town speeds, in town scenarios. It's actually out on the motorway when you're doing cruising speeds, like I'm doing about 100 kilometers an hour now. And the refinement in this car is very impressive. Those tires that I mentioned earlier do not let in that much noise into the cabin. Although, of course, the coarser the surface, the higher the noise. And so the surface I'm on right now is very coarse, quite, quite a lot of noise. But on the NKVE and on the North-South Highway, it does quieten down quite a bit. And when you're sat here, this is when you can really appreciate the way this car is built because over the lumps and bumps, there are no creaks, there's no rattles. And of course, there is this car's ride and handling. So when you're going through twisty bits, this drives like a Mazda. So it's very predictable, but more importantly, because of that excellent balance and the incredible amount of communication that you get through the steering wheel, despite this being an e-pass wheel, it just feels very confidence inspiring. But when you're out on the motorway and you're doing motorway speeds well north of 100 kilometers an hour, the Mazda 3 still maintains its composure. At no point does this car feel floaty, at no point does this car feel vague. At every possible moment, you know exactly what the car is doing. It's very easy for you to place it on the road. It's just nice. And if you want to carry higher speeds, again, the Mazda 3 will reward, although I will note that the ride is not as soft as what you get from the Toyota Corolla, which is known for its particularly plush ride. Unless, of course, you get the GR Sport, which I think is the best riding car within the segment. But, of course, if you're looking at a Mazda 3, chances are you've already overlooked the Toyota Corolla, GR Sport or otherwise, and chances are you've decided that a Honda Civic is not for you. And the reason why you arrive at that point is because you want something that is more upmarket, something that feels more premium, something that will make the neighbor's curtain switch. And of course, if you buy it in white, it's not really going to do much. But if you buy it in red, everyone's going to be looking at you. A Mazda in red always turns heads, no matter which model it is that you go for. And on top of that, because this car is so sorted with its full suite of ADAS features, like the traffic jam assist, the blind spot monitoring and so on, it just means that this is such an easy car to live with. If you're looking to upgrade from a B-segment saloon, for example, the Mazda 3 will make you feel like you have made a significant improvement in life, a jump up in quality, as it were. And that, I think, is the purpose of a C-segment saloon, to reward former B-segment saloon owners, to make them feel like, yes, I've done a thing. I've made an upgrade. This is a step up in life. And the Mazda 3 certainly feels like a step up. This feels like a step up compared to other C-segment saloons, let alone something with a B-segment, like a Honda City or a Toyota Vios. Now, of course, there will be some of you who say that, yes, a turbocharged mill would be a little bit more fun, a little bit more punchy. And I guess to some extent, you may be right if that is what you're in it for. But to me, the best driver's cars are the ones that offer a degree of balance. And to me, the Mazda 3's balance is just right. Of course, if you're looking for something that is a little bit more economical in town, then you might want to look at the 
Honda Civic RS EHEV because that hybrid system is known to be very frugal in town, although out on the open road, it can run out of puff just a little bit. And of course, if you want something that is perhaps slightly rarer or maybe a little bit more subtle, you could go for the Toyota Corolla GR Sport, which is a car that I certainly had a lot of fun in, although the engine in this, the powertrain in the Mazda 3 is certainly a lot more thrilling than that, although in terms of outright handling, I think both cars are just as fun. Or you can be really boring and just buy a regular Corolla. The choice is yours. But if you were to ask me, and more importantly, if your budget allows, this really is the C-segment saloon to look for. I think this car is the perfect balance of performance, ride, handling, and premium appeal. And of course, you get a five-year warranty with five years servicing, which means five years of hassle-free ownership. Tell me which other brand offers that. In any case, that has been our review of the 2024 Mazda 3 Saloon. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon so you're notified every time we make a new upload. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All the links are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care, stay safe, and jangan bodoh. Thank you.